America's angry, obviously. And we've been protesting for 50 years now. We started protesting in the 60s. We protested, we got a presidential task force, and they came out with recommendations and the police implemented them. 50 years later, what do we have? Presidential task force. They're gonna give recommendations and the police are going to implement them. So are we really gonna wait 50 more years to find out if we've gotten it wrong? So how do you get the American policing institution to change? And how do we restore hope in the American public about policing? I think we need to start with the systems. And if you look at the way we are constructed, we have 18,000 different police departments in the United States. 50 states, 50 different training standards. In California, for example, we have 664 hours that we have to complete to be a police officer. New York has 649. California requires 40 hours of physical fitness training. New York requires 64. California requires zero hours of communication training, and New York requires four. <laughs> I say that our values and beliefs in policing are reflected in the amount of time we spend training. And if we want to show the American public that we are listening to what they are saying, we need to weigh what we're doing and balance communication training along with use of force training, riot training, and taser training. So how do you get an American institution to change? Gandhi influenced the British Empire and he did it through peace, love, and nonviolence. Social media creates change. Legislature can create change too. Body cams for officers. But there's one thing that gets overlooked because it's not sexy and it doesn't make headlines and that's science. Because science can create change. Science is not sexy, but it takes a look at our universe and we try to determine what makes, makes these changes, what really influences society. Nathan Smith Davis, in 1847, he decided he was going to change the medical field through science. He decided, with 250 of his closest friends, to create the American Medical Association. And they founded the American Medical Association on science. And they did two things. They unified the medical field across all of the United States. And the other thing they did is they founded on a core belief, and that core belief was science. And today, with 5,600 different hospitals in the United States, they all look to the AMA to decide when they're looking at practice or policy, they go look to the AMA for guidelines. So why can't we do that in policing? Why can't we have an American Policing Association? I don't have 250 friends, but I have eight of them. And tomorrow, we are beginning our inaugural meeting of the American Society of Evidence-Based Policing. And we too, like Nathan Smith Davis, we believe that science has a place in policing. The mission of the AMA, and if you look at our mission, it's to promote the art and science of policing and the betterment of public health and safety. You could take most of their guidelines and what they're trying to promote through society, and you could change physician for police officer, medicine, for health and health and safety. These are things that are interchangeable. And if you base the core values of science and unify all of American policing, we can change. Last year, I conducted a scientific study on communicative intelligence with my friend, Dr. Kendall Zoller. And our theory, our hypothesis was, if we taught officers communication, how to speak to the emotion of what people were feeling on the street, they would be more receptive to police direction, and they would actually have an improved perception of police legitimacy. So we taught the officers, speak to the emotion first, and when you spoke to that emotion, the citizen should respond with a, yeah, that's it, or yes, some type of affirmative response. So after about three sessions in, one of the officers came back with a story. 
And he had said he had responded to a disturbance between this gal and her roommates. She had let some friends who were down and out move in with her, and they took advantage of her kindness, and now they wouldn't leave. So when the officers got there, the contact officer explained to her that she needed a 30-day eviction notice to get her roommates out. And when she found that out, she lost her mind screaming, yelling, yelling at the officers, yelling at her roommates. And the contact officer is saying, ma'am, calm down, calm down, relax, relax. <laughs> we, know, <laughs> we know how helpful that is when you tell your wife, just calm down, honey. <laughs> yeah, works like a charm. <laughs> so the cover officer is watching and he's thinking, you know, well, well that's not working. So he thought, you know, okay, I'm, I'm going to try this out. So he, he looks at her and he says, ma'am, it must be really frustrating to lend a hand to your friends and have them screw you over. And then when the cops show up, they can't even help you. And she stopped, looked at him, and said, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs> No, uh, it wasn't, oh, yes, sir. <laughs> but that's what's great about science, is sometimes, <laughs> right? <laughs> that sometimes you have unexpected outcomes. But science can give us hope that police can change, and that over the next 50 years, instead of riots, we just get a whole lot more of, that's right, motherfucker. <laughs>